God, this is the worst fuel tank design in the world. You can't, you can't give it too much because it just overflows and petrol goes everywhere and people get angry. For God's sake. Uh, it's about as much as I can be arse putting in. Thank you. Vroom. Hey guys. Oh shit, try not to fall off. There's a little boy driving that, that his dad's Audi. Uh, Sorry if you're a follower of mine, little boy. Oh shit! <laughs> right, welcome back to the new motorcycle channel, guys. It's been a long time since we've done a vlog, and that's not because of me um, not trying to do a vlog. I, I tried to record several, and um, there was a setting on the. God, this bike's manky. There was a setting on <laughs> there was a setting on the uh, GoPro that meant um, it didn't recognise this microphone for whatever reason, which is a bit frustrating. So um, I did a really well, what I think was quite a cool ride over a nice local road to us uh, called Kernamai, and it was. Um, yeah, just um, for whatever reason, it just didn't record or pick anything up, so... Uh, 35 miles an hour there. Um, so it was a bit annoying, because I actually hoped to kick... Sorry, I'm paranoid, that's why I keep looking in the mirror, I'm paranoid of... Um, what I'm recording and whether it's actually recording, but um, it, it, it was actually something I'd hoped to kickstart, which was a new series um, focusing on rides around Scotland, like the best driving roads around Scotland. And I thought I'd kick it off with the Cairn Amount because it was a, it's a good road and I had to go over that way anyway. So, not to worry, it's a good opportunity to get out on that road again. But yeah, that's something I've been thinking about for a while. Um, now that I've got this bad boy. And I've got some new gear, which I'll talk about in just, I guess, a few minutes, but um, yeah, it'd be nice to actually get out and explore Scotland now that I've got more time off. Um, before I la when I last spoke to you, I was just in the final stages of uh, finishing up my role in the office or with WellSafe and, and moving to a, an offshore role as a, as a night supervisor. Uh, so that I, I, I'm back now. I've, I've done my first three weeks offshore. Uh, it's, night shift is quite brutal, to be honest. I find night shift really quite tough to get accustomed to, and then the other side of coming back, coming back from night shift, just took longer than I expected. So it's taken me a while to actually get into the into the garage. In fact, I've not really done anything in the. 12 days that I've been home, 13 days I've been home in the garage. Bought a Range Rover. <laughs> the most uh, oil field wankery thing to do is buy a Range Rover. Nah, I bought, I bought an old shitty Range Rover. Because um, my Scooby died, unfortunately. Um, my Scooby was my, although it didn't look at it, it was actually one of my most favourite vehicles in the world. I've done loads of stuff to it. Um, new turbo. New injectors, remap, um, nice shock to springs up here, the brakes, and I've had some amazing rides, rides, drives on that thing just over the past three and a half years of ownership, but unfortunately it just succumbed to too much rust, um, irreparable rust as well. Inner and outer cell were going, loads of things were going wrong with it. I've had the gearbox stripped apart to try and find some bearing lines. And 
yeah, it just wasn't it wasn't happening. So Scooby has gone to the scrapyard in the sky. I sold it to my friends who are breaking it. I got the money back that I put into it. So happy enough that uh, I'm happy that they're taking it and, and, and giving it a good send off by selling the parts and hopefully allow some other Subarus to live on. Uh, so uh, but, uh, an amazing car. I will have another Subaru at some point, but it just didn't really make sense to at the moment to and spend money on the kind of Subaru that I wanted, which would probably be a an STI blow by which are getting silly money now so so I bought this Range Rover <laughs> which I'll probably do a few videos on actually because I've really enjoyed uh, working on it it's been quite good fun uh, it's it's a 4.6 V8 with an LPG conversion it's 1996 it's an Australian import um, my girlfriend absolutely hates it questions but why the hell I bought it but I picked it up for the grand sum of £1,400, so even if I get a year's motoring out of it, I will be over the moon. And it sounds awesome, it's a big glass mobile, so yeah, just all around pretty happy with that. Um, so we'll, 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 <laughs> we'll probably do another video on that. Let me know in the comments if you want to see another video on that. Hello doggies, doggies, dog, 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 dog. Um, Apart from that, I have got some new kit, so... We're going to go for a coffee, not taking you with me, I just decided to get out of the house, I've got a day off, I've got lots of days off, I go back offshore a week today, the rest of my week's filling up fast, I just took the opportunity whilst it's such a beautiful sunny day, just to go and there's a nice coffee shop called the Coffee Apothecary, not too far, about 12 miles from here, so I'm going to take the long roads, the windy roads and we're going to get some, some nice shots in whilst I sh shoot the shit to the camera, um, I bore you to death with what's going on in my life. The life of strain. And hopefully get some capture some sweet noise from the Indian. Um so yeah. I got some new gear. What's the sale of the Subaru? I obviously carved out some money to buy another car and insure another car, but um I took the opportunity to buy some new gear as well, which is much needed to be honest. It's been it's been a while since I've had any new bike gear. Um, I, I had some shitty old RST stuff that I got, which has done me fine, don't get me wrong, but I got that when I first started riding. Um, same with the helmet, same with some other racing bobs. So I've kind of looked quite scabby on my bike for a while. Um, and it's not all about looks, to be honest. It's about dressed for the slide, not the ride, and all that other bollocks. But when you look like a tank, you kind of want to make it remedy that if you can. So. I got some nice new boots, don't know if you can see that. I got some nice new couple of pairs of jeans, Kevlar jeans with all the Aramid protection from XL Moto and these, these fit like a dream and they're really comfy so I'm happy with that. Uh, what way are we going? Go this way. I can't really remember the way but we'll figure it out. Um, and then I got a nice new jacket, I'll show you a picture. And most importantly, I got a new helmet which is I debated this for a while what helmet to get oops shit time to go I debated for a while what helmet to get um, I love the open face showy but I want to do vlogs an open face doesn't really work well for me what it does do I guess is keep your speed down <laughs> But a naked bike does that anyway because it's uncomfortable above certain speeds. So um, yeah, but the um, so then I thought, what about the showy Glamster? That seems to be getting quite a lot of reviews. And I tried one on, and it just felt a little bit short for my big head. Like I just felt like I don't know, it just didn't didn't feel right. Um, someone had one. I thought it was nice and light, really well made. And what I ended up going for was a uh, an RI. Where are you going? Oh, you're indicating you. Fucking idiot! <laughs> Get road rash style on them. Come here, you! Piece of shit. Um. 
So, what was I saying? It's a wee bit windy in this helmet because I've got a mount on it. So the helmet's actually really quiet. It's really quiet compared to the last helmets I've had. But it's a little windy just now because I've got a mount on it. So sorry, I went for an RI uh, Rapide, I think it's called. Um, which is uh, very similar. It looks a little bit like the Simpson helmets that the, uh, the Stig used to wear. Uh, where it's got the mouth grill and everything else. But again, in a nice grey colour. And, and to be honest, as soon as I saw it, I thought, man, that's really cool. Um, it's really fucking expensive as well. But uh, to be honest, they say you should spend what you can afford to spend in a helmet and I feel like I got my money's worth out of that last helmet. Um, <laughs> I got my money's worth out of that last helmet. Um, so I decided to spend a little bit more. I think this was about 400 quid, um, which is a lot, but also Damn, you notice a difference. You notice a difference straight away. It's just lighter, more comfortable. That's me moving my head around even though no one can actually see it. Um, and whilst it is a bit noisy, the reason it's a little bit noisy at the moment with wind noise is because of, if you look at the picture on screen now, I didn't want to go and stick a helmet mount on this bike because it's my, on this helmet. Uh, the 3M double-sided sticky tape thing because it's a brand new helmet. I didn't really want to go and do that straight away. Um, I might do it, but I didn't just, I, I think they look ugly. I'm not always going to be riding with a GoPro. I, I, I like the look of the helmet without it. So I bought one of these mounts that kind of just goes over the mouthpiece, which is, which is nice. It's exactly kind of what I was looking for. There was a few different options. There was like a clamp, there was, um, there was this thing which, which, which kind of sticks to it. And to be honest, pretending it's not moved, I think it's okay. I think it's absolutely fine, so. This, uh, <laughs> this bike, this bike is awesome. Is it this? There you go. Maybe that's the, the wee bit quiet. Uh, yeah, this bike is absolutely awesome. Got it, I love it. It's grown on me. I'm more used to it now, I'm more comfortable on it. Uh, just need to get some miles under my belt. A nice patch of oil there, don't really want to do that in the rain. Um, I had a horrible experience on this bike. Nothing to do with this bike, but there's a bit of advice for anyone looking to buy a... If you're looking to buy a bike... I know I'm quite far over here, but... Um, if you're looking to buy a bike, um, consider where you get it serviced. It's okay if you buy an older bike, you can serve it yourself, but... I mean, I bought this thing, and it's in Edinburgh, and it just... Yes, I could have paid to come and get it picked up to get it serviced and everything else but it's just it's expensive like it's it's a, I had to drive this into Edinburgh before I went offshore so I could get it serviced so I could then use it when I'm back and, and enjoy it um, but um, that means going down to Edinburgh which is a long old ride and when you've got a never-ending winter like we had to have uh, just about a month ago where it was I got caught in a snowstorm and that was the video that I took as I was going over here in the mountain that had no fecking sound. But you might be able to see from we cut away here, it, 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 it was pretty bad, it was pretty horrendous. Uh, it was very very cold and then on the way back after my bike had been serviced I got caught in the most abysmal downpour ever. Uh, none of what clothes that I thought were waterproof weren't actually waterproof. Uh, a sideways storm, two inches of rain on the road. Just It just was the most unpleasant experience I think I've ever had on a bike. If not one of the most unpleasant experiences of my life. I couldn't feel my hands. I'm going to try and get some heated grips for, for later on in the year. But um, yeah, and I'm sure plenty of motorcyclists have been caught in that before. But it's just not very pleasant. So um, worth bearing in mind. If you're buying a bike, then consider the time of year you have to go and service it. And just the ball like it is not being able to just locally pop into your... I wouldn't have ridden the bike if I didn't have to. Because... It's not my only mode of transport, but when you have to be somewhere for a certain time and the, the weather dog shit, it just doesn't make things very pleasant, so... Um, so these roads are alright, they're just, they're, the back roads just out of Aberdeen, I guess, north, north of Aberdeen, heading towards a place called Udney. 
um, where this little coffee shop is. So I'm gonna, they do some good coffee. So I'm gonna go get uh, some tasty coffee. Um, and then probably have another bullshit, take the long road back, see if there's anywhere nice we can go. It's just nice to be out and it's just a bit warmer. It must be about 15, 16 degrees today. You just you notice it a lot more in the bike. It's really nice. So yeah, that, that, the, the plan for the vlog, I kind of feel like I lost a little bit of drive recently. Uh, just with all the changes going on in my life, I didn't really realise how much all those changes. I thought I would be able to pick it up straight away and just get right back at it. But here I am, 14 days home almost or the 12 days home and I've, and I've not really done anything I thought I really would have got into the garage by now but um, we'll get there we'll get there uh, I think it's one of these things especially with the likes of um, quite a fine balance interacting all the time on Instagram writing like recording, editing, and I've kind of fallen off that bandwagon a little bit, and I've, I've, I've struggled to get, I've struggled for the enthusiasm to get back at it. Um, hence today, I thought, you know what, I can just pop on this beast. Oh, do you want to go and chat shit into the camera and and and, and, and ride a nice motorbike? Yes, yes, I do. That, that would be brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, but we'll get back. We'll get back to it again. Uh, we always do. The, the bikes are always there. Uh, I say that to a lot of my mates who say struggle for motivation. These are a project. These aren't a revenue making stream for me. These are literally an outlet, a creative outlet. Oh good, surface redressing. Forgot that was what they like to do at summertime. Yeah, pricks. Oh, that's not too bad, he says. So yeah, it, it'll come back. The motivation always comes back. Um, unfortunately this time it's, it's not come back and it's not really aligned with me when I've been home which is a shame because I, I know a lot of people like my videos <laughs> I know a lot of people watch my videos and may not like them uh, but, but sometimes uh, I've noticed it a lot a lot of people, a lot of my friends uh, don't know whether it's just coming out the back of this pandemic or what it is but there's a lot of people just feeling a little bit flat and demotivated at the moment you kind of notice it on Instagram or maybe that's my perception of what it is on Instagram, but you kind of notice not much happening, there's a, just a little bit of a... I don't know, uh, less of a buzz about it than maybe say three months ago, four months ago. Um, same, but that's, maybe that correlates with my lack of enthusiasm as well um, to, the, to the whole situation, but... Um, I think with these things you just accept it and, and understand that yes, so for me, my, my biggest issue is I want to do everything at once and I want to do it well, which can actually become really overwhelming. Jesus Christ, someone just hit me in the neck. It can be really overwhelming and subsequently you end up just doing nothing at all. Uh, rather than trying to do everything, you end up doing nothing. Uh, you get pissed off, you're like, oh, God's sake, I wish I'd, I'd done this. So, uh, this week I had Oh, I'm going to finish exhaust, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. In reality, all I think I'm really going to get done is get my carburetors sorted uh, and sent across to Gus. I'd, I'd hoped to do that before I went away, but I didn't realise the, the process for seracoating the carburetors was maybe a little bit more onerous than initially expected. So um, This afternoon I'm going to get in the garage and... Well, I'm machine polished, actually. That's not, I've not been sat in my arse. I'm machine polished the Range Rover and it's changed it from an old piece of shit that my girlfriend hates to a shiny old piece of <laughs> shit that my girlfriend hates uh, but I, it's it's amazing how transformed that thing is with a machine polisher and I hate that kind of stuff I hate cleaning stuff but I got really look at the state of this bike it's obvious I hate cleaning stuff but I got really into that because you could see the you can see the differences straight away like right, Cass Duncan sell yourself um, so, yeah, it's, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to a little place called Udney Green first, which is really nice, uh, because we're almost at the coffee place, but I'll go to this Udney Green place first, because it's, it's really pretty, it's just a nice little Aberdeenshire village, um, so yeah, motivation comes back, 
Um, uh, this project is really, really big. I kind of challenged myself in a lot, and, and Ewan from Sugarly Shed kind of hit the nail on the head the other night saying, it's more of a science experiment. You're kind of teaching yourself loads of shit, which is absolutely right. There's loads of bits that I just kind of, I don't know, just don't like these side panels, for example, have just been an absolute saga. And I will see them to the end and I'll get them finished. But it's not as if the results are as straightforward as the other XS 750 that I've got, for example, will be, let's take it apart. Let's make a seat base. This is all stuff that I'm, 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 I'm pretty, pretty versed with. So the so results should happen a little bit quicker. <laughs> he says. How are everyone else's projects doing? Are you progressing? Are you feeling a, a similar sense of lack of motivation? Is it just kind of concentrating around me and a few of my mates? Or is it, is it wider reaching than I initially thought? Um, if so, let me know. Hit me up in the comments. Hit me up in Instagram messages. Good to hear from you. Uh, some days it's just good to get out and ride. It's amazing how cleansing riding can be. I hope this fucking... I hope this thing works. Yeah. I love this bike. It's just, it's just awesome. Oh cool, this is where I die. For me this bike is all about, and I'll do a full review in this bike soon. I just wanted to own it a little bit longer so I can figure out some of the shit I like and some of the bits I don't like. And with this bike, hello. We've done some damage to my bike. <laughs> So, uh, what I like about this bike is the torque and the the sounds phenomenal. I, I, I'm going to buy a decat. I was speaking to Levi last time I was in. Um, last time I was, getting, I was getting my service, looking at all these other nice bikes, other nice Indians. Um, but yeah, the um, Sydney Green. This is it. Nice little place. Just thought I'd do a little, little turn. No, that's not the one. Nice little bit here. I think I can just go around the block. Oh shit, that's it. Cool how it's all fucking gravel. There you go. There's a really nice little restaurant here. Eat in the green. I don't know, just a nice little, nice little village. It's really nice, isn't it nice? Everything's so nice. Oh, try not to die. Just take the bike on and do a big fat donut. Um, how do I get out of here? Here? Yeah, so, what was I saying? Oh, shit, gravel as well. Um, oh, fuck, I've not got a goddamn mask, have I? Maybe I'll just sweet talk them through the door. This fucking coronavirus can piss off having to wear a goddamn mask everywhere. I'm so sick of it, it's shit. Okay, anyway, it's nice to get out in the bike. Maybe I can wear my helmet, actually. That's like a mask. <laughs> Look like a complete vest at the same time, but... Uh, what was I saying? I can't remember. Oh, this bike. Yeah, talking about this bike. I'll do a full review on this bike. I've, yeah, it's been to Levi, that was it. I'm going to get uh, a decat. Just to make no make it a little bit noisier. Um, probably buy an exhaust as well at some point, but I think the minute you start changing multiple parts of that system, 
they're quite sensitive to change and they need a power commander so apparently they're okay with a decat according to the Indian dealership um, if you want to change more than that then you you likely have a power commander which can sting you I mean if you're looking for a, an SNS bat box and a power commander chuck two cruise control on uh, you're around about a thousand pounds for the whole lot so um, yeah quite expensive bloody expensive which is not really what this bike is about especially I mean I just want to make it sound like it shoots that that that, that noise you can hear when it accelerates sounds phenomenal wouldn't it be nice if it was just that but a little bit louder um, so we shall see and we are at coffee point so what I'm going to do is where the fuck is it again oh it's next to that closed road I may not even get coffee here oh no I can't, I'll go in the other way what I'll do is I will love you and leave you and catch up with you in the next episode whenever that is but let me know what you think of Scotland's Best Driving Roads vlog probably there's about, there's probably about 15 or 20 episodes I could do but at least I know I can tick off a good 5 that are close to home um, and then go from there so let's see what happens cheers guys, take it easy tasty coffee